Today, we focus on the surgical protocol for the Bredent Blue Sky and Narrow Sky implants. For this video, we chose a 4.5 by 10 mm fixture. I invite you to walk through the tray and components step by step with me, Dr. Darshan Parikh, an IFZI Master Course instructor. Let's begin. The patient's bone density itself guides the drilling protocol. This means one would use the top line drills with a thick band for D1 or dense bone and conversely prefer the bottom line thinly banded drills for softer densities, namely D2 to D4. The crestal drills are placed just above and arranged according to diameter. The implant carriers and torx drivers occupy the top right corner of the layout. This is what the color-coded sequence would look like in summary. The pilot drill. A well-designed tool with a sharp peak or spitzer is great to begin with as it helps mark the precise location of the osteotomy site without bouncing off the ridge. The thick metal band provides a 3mm wide countersink as you see here in fairly good detail as I drill to 6mm first and then to 8mm. The twist drills are used next to drill to the desired depth and are laser marked at 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 and 18mm. You can control the trajectory or angulation at this point. Run at 800 rpm, depth stoppers optional. Remember to use the paralleling pins thereafter for a quick visual check or to shoot an IOPA. The progressive sky drills are used tube in tube to widen the osteotomy. The 3.5 dia drill is employed for both the orange colored narrow sky or yellow colored regular shoulder blue sky implants. Up next, the 4.0 dia drill. The convenience and relative ease for the surgeon is self-evident. Remember that the RPM drops to 300. The subsequent 4.5 dia drill or final drill for this series. Again, we drill at a slow speed of 300 RPM and with controlled depth. The crestal drill helps to relieve the stress at the neck of the implant and profile the bone, which will help avoid excess pressure and maintain crestal bone levels in the long term. The fixtures itself can be machined or hand-driven to high torque values while achieving good primary stability. The recommendations for immediate loading are from 30 to 45 newton centimeters. The company recommends an isocrestal position, which means that your implant shoulder should be at the level of the bone crest. The cover screw can be delivered with a variety of tools, with the hand driver or torx as conventionally done, or even with the physio dispenser using the implant carrier to deliver the cover screw to the site. At the end, this is what a good surgery ought to look like. Please feel free to reach out to me with your questions on my email address. I hope to hear from you and to see you soon. Thank you.